I have a big imagination. When my dad reads me stories, I'm in that world. But what's the Jungle Book like in real life? Whoa! We read the book and watched the movies, noticing the differences in the storylines, how the characters and settings were portrayed. Mowgli, the wolf child, Shere Khan, the tiger, Bagheera, the leopard, Baloo, the bear, the Bonderlog, the jungles, and the heart of India. We went back in time to Kipling's era, the British Raj, and learned he never visited central India, the setting for his stories. Instead, the Jungle Book was based on another book, c &E, or Camp Life on the Satpura Range, a tale of Indian adventure by Robert Armitage Sterndale, a British naturalist who experienced these jungles firsthand. How has Mowgli's jungle changed since 1877? How are the Jungle Book's settings and characters different from the real jungle and animals? Where was this setting in real life? We're going there to show you. We're Sila and Lloyd, a father-daughter team. Starting in Delhi, we're taking the long route to Kathmandu by road, rail, and river, going to the wildest places, craziest festivals, tallest mountains, holiest pilgrimage sites, and busiest cities we could find. We visited Kana National Park for five days, immersing ourselves in what we imagined was the best replica of a functional central Indian ecosystem that would have dominated the Satpura range during Kipling's time. Kipling's setting for the Jungle Book in 1894 was further to the west, along the Wanganga River and the jungles of the Sindhi district. The likeliest place where Mowgli and his wildlife friends roamed along the Wanganga is now underwater, behind the Duty Dam. Derndale described the Sindhi district as half wilderness with tigers roaming almost the entire area. The village of Kaniwara mentioned in the book is a little over 20 miles due west of the Wanganga. And the city ruins where the Banderlog, the monkey people lived, are nowhere to be found but in Kipling's words and on film. A great roofless palace crowned the hill, and the marble of the courtyards and the fountains was split and stained with red and green. We could have gone to those places, searching for a stretch of inspirational river that even Kipling never visited. But we were more interested in the ecosystem and wildlife of central India found in the Jungle Book. And Kana seemed to be the best fit. This is where we found inspiration from wild India. We hear the alarm call. We're looking for predators. I hope we find some. Searching for wildlife, we rode in shared gypsies, a rugged safari vehicle, with a driver, a guide, and other park visitors. A male tiger killed a buffalo. Might be able to see the male tiger. The most challenging search was for the big predators, tigers and leopards. <gasps> I guess they can hide in this grass. There's the pug mark. We continued through the forests of the Kisli Zone, one of the four zones that allows safaris in the park, and heard spotted deer alarm calls. And the alarm call might say that there's a tiger down there, or a leopard. There it is. There it is. There it is. Leopards are a rare sighting in Kana, our guide said. The dense underbrush and moving leopards made focusing a challenge. Sorry for the bad video, but the footage of predators will get better and better after this. When we hear the word jungle, we think of a lush rainforest. But jungle is a Hindi word that simply means forest. And Kana primarily has a deciduous forest whose trees lose their leaves for part of the dry season, with most rainfall during the monsoon. Someone has spotted the tiger. Yeah. Whoa! All the way at the end? Daddy! Is it in the pond? It's at the corner. Wow. It's in like the shady part of the pond, so it's beautiful. And really. Playful looking, not scared. It's like licking its paw and in the water, mm -hmm. like a kitty cat. We just
just learned that Tyker's name is Jordan. Is it Jordan? Jordan. Right now, there are deer that are approaching the watering hole that the tiger is in. And the tiger is like awakening from his rest. And then we get, we just see what happens. Hi. It's moving, it's moving. scary like Shere Khan, a typical one-dimensional predator cast as a villain in the movies. And nature doesn't discriminate between good and evil. Whoa, look at that. We're leaving the Bagheera Resort, going down to the Bagheera River. All this would be underwater during the monsoon. This place reminds me of the Jungle Book where in the dry season all the animals congregated and they had the peace area here. And the heat went on and on and sucked up all the moisture till at last the main channel of the Wainganga was the only stream that carried a trickle of water between its dead banks. Through most of March and April the Indian subcontinent looked like this. Severely hot temperatures everywhere. And when Hathi the wild elephant who lived for a hundred years and more saw a long, lean, blue ridge of rock show dry in the very center of the stream. He knew that he was looking at the peace rock, and then and there he lifted up his trunk and proclaimed the water truce, as his father before him had proclaimed it fifty years ago. The deer, wild pig, and buffalo took up the cry hoarsely. By the law of the jungle, it is death to kill at the drinking places once the water truce has been declared. Oh, don't forget oh. the truce. I know the law, Bucks. Indeed, water in ponds and waterways was one of the main reasons for Kana's large wildlife populations. And during the week, we explored water features by gypsy and by foot. This is the Bagheera River again, and that flows to where we were before. Mm. Well, it's so tiny. Yeah. On this day, we'd see the most wildlife, and there was a twist as to why. We just saw a barking deer. It's pretty cool to see another deer and they, they live in the really dense jungle so they're hard to see and this one just crossed right in front of us. We drove through the forest and eventually reached a vast area of grasslands and savannas. of brand new tiger pub marks. They're so huge. I'm like, what? See how there, there's the footprints, yeah. right? And then the, the track is over the footprint. Jeez. That tiger is close. Oh, okay, so the tracks we just saw, he thinks is from, from this. Junior Badrum.
Backlit by the morning sun, a herd of endangered barasinga walked away. At Kana, their numbers increased from fewer than 100 in the 1970s to over 1,000 today. That's amazing. Walking right by us was a mother jackal, who in her search for food seemed fearless. A herd of bison grazed, with minor birds sitting on their back, eating insects in a symbiotic relationship. Only when we saw the bison up close did we realize that the minas had a virtual banquet on the bison's back. The black buck were recently reintroduced to Kana, but still only a few persist today. You getting a good view? Oh, it just laid down. <laughs> we just saw a black buck. It was really cool. The twist is that these Kipling-esque savannas and grasslands are former villages, complete with water impoundments. From the air, field outlines are still visible in some places. If left alone, however, these grasslands, great habitat for so many animals, will turn back into forest. So the National Park uses prescribed burns and plowing to maintain the fields, mimicking what villagers once did here. We just arrived at Mookie Bay. The Mookie Gate is the gate at the southern part of the park. We're chasing after a tiger. What is it? Hold on to the rail. Yeah, hold on. Ah, it's so bouncing. Oh my god. Ah. Yeah, they're going crazy fast. Seems like that was a false alarm. Who knows what's coming, coming up next. We're zooming around again. There's another potential tiger sighting. Oh. We're about to fly off the boat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lower. If we don't fly off the gypsy. Minutes later, the unexpected happened, and we found ourselves in a traffic jam in the middle of nowhere. Like every single vehicle here. Look at this. We saw the tiger up there. Can you see it? Barely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A tiny bit. You can see it if, if you if you trust I'm me. Fine. I, you're fine. You don't want to watch it. You can yeah. see it again. The front the front person is not moving, and not sharing the That's moment. Correct. Yes. Correct. So so we understand. He's just being too greedy about it. Yeah. And just being um, irrational. Okay. The tiger just moved, and everybody everybody's going crazy. Look at this. Everybody's trying to get in. I'm kind of more interested in watching everybody than the tiger at this point. It's resting in there. I'm surprised it's staying around. 150 years ago, Sterndale drew a map showing the CNE district. He marked wildlife hotspots on it, portraying a time of abundant animals in scattered villages and towns. Today, human landscapes dominate, with much less room for wild animals. We're tracking this tiger. We saw footprints. It looks fake. No. On the other side of the pond, there's a tiger. It's resting right there. Yeah. It's moving and walking right now. Tiger's moving around, everybody's really interested. Little tiger and its name is DJ5. We visited Kana to be like Mowgli. In the jungle, we can experience a sense of interconnection and wonder. We can be immersed in and know something larger than ourselves, something wild and primal, 
even if we're just riding in a gypsy. We're struck by India's sacred relationship to wildlife and, with over a billion people, how India is still able to be home to hyenas, wolves, tigers, elephants, leopards, and more. We wish those who left their ancestral villages in Kana for the sake of Kana's wildlife great prosperity. Though the path to find a new and meaningful home is likely a challenge, similar perhaps to Mowgli leaving his jungle home. Next, we travel to Varanasi to make light offerings to the Ganges River for all of you and all beings. Hit subscribe to join our adventure team and watch diverse and authentic videos every week.